Hi, my name is Steve Turner and I'm an engineer paramedic with the San Mar County Fire Department. I also administer the website for the San Mar County Professional Firefighters Local 935, which is local935fire.org. In this video, we're going to cover thermogel. The San Mar County Fire Department uses thermogel for structure protection and wildland urban interface firefighting. We hope to provide for you an overview of thermogel's pock nozzle and backpack system as well as some of the tips and tricks of what we've learned over the years regarding operations, cleaning, maintenance, and storage. Thank you for watching. Thermogel's pock nozzle and backpack system is comprised of a nylon backpack, a five gallon bucket of concentrate, a pickup hose, a proportioner, and Thermogel's pock nozzle. There are three basic steps in preparing to apply Thermogel. First of which is properly mixing your Thermogel concentrate. Next is properly assembling all the necessary equipment. And third is ensuring that you have a proper mixture of water and thermogel concentrate by checking the viscosity of your flow. By far one of the most important things to remember regarding the use of thermogel is to thoroughly mix your concentrate. Clumps can form in thermogel's concentrate following extended periods of storage. These clumps of polymers which have come out of solution can potentially cause a problem by blocking the 1 and 2 percent proportioning holes in the eductor. That's why it's absolutely critical that thermogels concentrate be mixed regularly and thoroughly. Thermogel recommends that the concentrate be mixed at least twice a year and before each use. Next, let's look at how to use some garden hose shut-up valves and how they will prevent concentrate from spilling when disconnecting the pickup hose from the concentrate bucket. These are flow controls, three-quarter inch flow controls for regular garden hose and also a quick connect three-quarter inch works similar to that. Once you purchase these, the female end goes to the pickup tube, like so. The male end goes to the pickup hose, like so. And then the male end of uh, quick connect goes again to the pickup hose. And the female end goes on the pickup tube. Once you have them all together, it pops together in the quick connect, like so. And you're ready to go. When you have this together, the important part is assuring that you have tight seals all the way through. Everything should be tight so that there's no air leaks. Once you're assured that everything's tight, you put the pickup tube into your container, tighten it right here, like so. And then assuring that both of these knobs are in the open position, this is in the closed position, open position and you're ready to go. When it comes time to put on Thermogel's backpack system, you're going to want to make sure that you adjust all straps properly in order to avoid fatigue. Next, you want to connect all your hoses tightly, ensuring that there aren't any air leaks that can interfere with the ducting. Once your concentrate is mixed and all of your equipment is assembled, you're ready to flow thermogel. In order to be able to reduct the concentrate properly and to achieve the proper mixture of thermogel concentrate and water, 20 gallons per minute and a pressure of 75 to 100 psi needs to be supplied to the nozzle. Okay, so when you're in a tactical situation and you're about to apply gel to a structure or to any vertical surface, a car, a structure, whatever, before you begin to spray it on the structure, you're going to protect. Point to something else and make sure you've got your desired viscosity. Good. Turn it off. This is 99% water, except it's denser, thicker water. So this is, in a structure protection setting, this is what you want. Okay. When it's white, it's right. You want to make sure it's hanging vertically like this. No, no running. All right. So that looks good. That's perfect. 
Okay. The problem with straight stream is if you're too close and you're straight streaming it, what you want to avoid is applying it like foam. Mm -hmm. You know, it's different than foam. If you're straight streaming and blasting it onto a home, and a lot of it's shooting yeah, all over and running off, it's, right. it's just wasting the product. Okay. So that's just something to keep in mind. Okay, once we've finished uh, structure protection in one area, now you're ready to move on. You're still on the strike team. You're still in the mobile mode, but you're moving to the next structure. This is what you would do. Go ahead and disconnect your hose. While he's disconnecting the hose, taking the quick coupling off. Once that's done, and these valves are both put on the off position, this can be stored back in the back. This can be stored right in the compartment. Once you're asked to redeploy to another structure protection assignment, go ahead and pull out your system as you had stored it temporarily. Hook up your nozzle. What you want to do here is wait until the firefighter has got the nozzle in hand in a comfortable position before you rehook up this hose so there's no kinks in it. All set? Yes. Okay. You reconnect at the uh, quick connect assuring that both of the valves are now in the open position, straight up and down. You're ready to go deploy. Okay, once you're done with the assignment, you're back in your station for the cleaning process to support permanent storage. Go ahead and keep the uh, system intact. Loosen up from the uh, five gallon container and pull the tube out. And you want to open your nozzle and make sure both of these are in the open position so that you can drain out as much of the gel back into the bucket as possible. And here, as you can see, it's a slow process, moving slowly. No. Okay, that's done. We can go ahead and pull this out now. Okay, once you've gone ahead and taken the gel, most of the gel, and put it back in the container, you're going to go ahead and disconnect one side of the coupling that's hooked up to the tube and you're going to hold, hook up a hose straight on to the control valve. Turn the hose on full blast, make sure this valve is open. Make sure the fog is, uh, the nozzle's in fog and this is on flush. Once this is all done, you want to go ahead and cup your hand around the spray so it gets the extra gel off the tip. And you do this for approximately five minutes to make sure all of that solution is out of there. Once you've done the flush, you take a cup of salt, mix it up in there, make sure you got a good solution. Once the solution is set, you go ahead and run the pump again until you drain all the water. Okay, once you've gone, gone ahead and uh, totally uh, run clear water through the system, you take everything apart, as you can see, that we've done over here, and go ahead and take, make sure that all the excess gel is off of everything. Once this is all done, things you want to check is make sure that this is area of the nozzle, the eductor is clean, this portion is clean. Take an air hose, blow it all out, blow this portion out, blow any excess off of these parts here, once it's all clean, ready to go, assemble everything back together. Let's join Justin Simpson of Thermogel as he gives us some good pointers on how to clean and store Thermogel's proportioner and pickup tube. Just make sure, basically it needs to be stored clean and dry, okay? Uh, you want no residual, I'll, I'll, I'll clue you in as to how this works. If you, if you don't already know. There's liquid concentrate that comes through this part of the nozzle. It goes up a one-way check valve and it mixes, it begins to mix here with the gel water solution or your solution. Here obviously is only liquid concentrate and here is a mixed solution and it comes out a mixed solution. So what, was, what is going to happen if it isn't cleaned properly is it's going to, the mixed gel, which is 99% water, is eventually, as water does, it's going to evaporate and it's going to leave the polymer behind. If it isn't cleaned properly here, and here, where the mix is, uh, is at, it's going to harden and cause issues. And I'll show you what that looks like. So again, essentially, 
you want to make sure it is completely clean and completely dry. If, there, if there's any moisture in here, in your pickup hose, uh, where liquid concentrate flows, if there's any moisture, the liquid concentrate is obviously going to grab that water, it's going to activate, and it's going to cause potential issues. So do whatever you need to do to make sure that doesn't happen. So this, this will give you a window into why cleaning these are so important. If you don't clean it properly, you can end up with many different variations of this. And basically, this is the, these are the two set metering um, proportion rates. This is the 1% hole, this is the 2% hole. Um, that just gives you an idea of um, you know, how little gel is needed to go such a long way. But anyway, these can get gummed up, and as you see right now, this would completely not work because they're blocked. No liquid concentrate could get through there. Um, same with up here. You've got, you've got dried out gel, and uh, this would definitely, definitely cause a problem. To clear up any confusion on this nozzle, all right, when you have your indicator on, on our POC backpack system nozzle system that you have on your engines, when you have it set at flush, you're flushing the nozzle with liquid concentrate. So you're getting a vast amount, that's the orifice size, you're getting a vast amount of liquid concentrate flowing through your okay. nozzle. Now, when you have it at off, when you have it set at off, this is what you're getting. You're getting no liquid concentrate. So then you're flushing your nozzle with water. Now, one thing I recommended, if you can't get your 2 and your 1% to function properly, and that's what flush should do, is flush out any potential obscurements to those smaller holes, um, what you can do is, again, we got your indicator, flush, there's the size of the orifice. You, don't, you can't really do structure protection on flush. What you can do is turn it either way and, and get somewhere like, you know, like that. That's going to give you enough gel enough liquid concentrate, I should say, to have a viable mixed product to hang vertically on any surface. This concludes our Thermogel Overview video. We hope you find this information useful. One thing we'd like you to remember is that this video is not intended to be a step-by-step -step instructional video on how to use Thermogel. You should refer to your Thermogel owner's manual for that information. Our project coordinator for this video was Battalion Chief Al Krelnikov. And we'd like to thank Thermogel Technical Specialist and Sales Rep Justin Simpson. We'd also like to thank Captain Doug Simpson and the crews at Station 94 on Lake Arrowhead for assisting with filming. This video was filmed and edited with software and hardware provided by the San Bernardino County Professional Firefighters, Local 935. If you'd like to contact us, you can do so through our website, which is local935fire.org. That's local935fire.org. Thank you again for watching.